Well, good evening. It's good to be here today and to have this opportunity to uh, share what I believe the Lord has laid on my heart. And after all, we all ought to be seeking to hear from God because we certainly need it. I tell you, the Lord has sure blessed us here and uh, I'm excited about what God is going to do. And uh, thing, things are progressing. I'm thankful for our pastor and our staff, uh, Brother Steve and everyone that labors and works. I, uh, at the funeral today, uh, there was a good crowd there and I heard Brother Mike say that Delia, I always called her Dealey. I've known her for many, many years, uh, was a diabetic also as was brother, as, as is Brother Mike. And she told him, she said, the thing to think about is this. If you put something in your mouth and it tastes good, spit it out. You're not supposed to eat it. Uh, I enjoyed that uh, bit of humor and wisdom. <clears throat> I have some uh, trivia that I'm sure you, some of you may or may not be interested in. But uh, there's lots of things on the news these days about trillions of dollars. I want to give you a perspective, not from my wisdom, but from someone else. A million seconds. Now think of a million as a second as a dollar, okay? A million seconds is 12 days. A billion seconds is 32 years. A trillion seconds is 32,000 years. Now, I know from the looks on some of your faces, and especially my accountant friend over here, you're going to check that out and see if it's correct. And if you do, that's okay. If I'm mistaken, I'll correct it at some later date. <laughs> That's what the news media does. If it's convenient, we'll correct our error or our mistake. Well, I want to share with you a subject. You know, I, I spend a lot of time in my pickup, and uh, Monday I was driving, and, and the Lord really impressed upon my heart this subject uh, to get ready for the next body life meeting. Had I, and I did not know that I would be here tonight. This was kind of a short notice, but I jotted down some things Monday that I think the Lord wants me to use. And my subject matter tonight is something that may arouse your interest. It should. Do you know that it's dangerous to be a Christian? Now, I want to tell you, in America, we're spoiled. We have been so blessed in this country to have the freedom that we have enjoyed for so many years. And very seldom has it been that a Christian in America was put to death. But that's not the case around the world. And the truth of the matter is, as it is in the world, so it is becoming in America. So I think what God wants us to hear tonight is not something discouraging, but something that is a preparation for the future. Because in preparing for what God has is a blessing because God blesses his people through it all, in it all. God blesses his people. I'm going to be reading this evening from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, and Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24. These are words that ought to pique our interest because 
this is the place we find ourselves in this evening in America. Matthew 5, verse 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Sometimes we think in inviting people to come to Christ that uh, the Christian life is an easy journey. It's a walk in the park. But the truth of the matter is, if you're really a follower of Christ, it's dangerous. It's dangerous to your reputation because all people, some people will say evil against you falsely. It's dangerous financially because I assure you, the world, if not the government, is coming for everything we have. And I'm not sad about that, and I'm not alarmed by that. I just know that's part of the progression of where we are and where we're headed. And a true believer ought to be excited about that because the end is in sight. Now, I want to tell you, we've lost some great people in this church recently, and it breaks my heart. I love <laughs> to hear David Brooks on Wednesday nights <laughs> when Brother Mike would always say, and thank you for coming, and David Brooks would chime out, and thank you. Maybe we should have recorded that and play it every time <laughs> Brother Mike retorts with that. So persecuted they the prophets which were before you. We're not any better than they. In fact, the record is that they were more faithful probably than we are. They were more attuned to what was really happening in the world and really what the purpose of Christianity was all about and what the claims of Christ meant in a person's life. And the truth of the matter is, 11 of the 12 disciples, the apostles, died violently. And poor Apostle John that did not die was boiled in oil, and he survived it, and then was abandoned to the Isle of Patmos. Whatever made us think that being a Christian was an easy life, whatever made us think that being a Christian did not require a new word, commitment. The real word is surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. And our enemy is the flesh. The enemy is you, me, my flesh. Because at every turn, Satan uses our old flesh to turn us aside, to cause us to sin. And Satan is our arch enemy, and he hates us. And the world is our enemy. Our world is a dangerous place, an evil place. And the world is not our friend. And thank God for over, t what, 245 years we've had a great government. I believe a God-ordained government. But our 
government, because of the fallacy of mankind and the sinful nature of mankind, is now changing those God-given laws and rules that would help us to glorify the Savior, that help would help us to honor God. The world is not our friend, and thank God, <laughs> the world is not our home. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, I want to read these verses. And the clock's not on the wall up there, so I can't watch my time. I am? You mean I've gone beyond my 15 minutes? Okay. Matthew 24, 1, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, These shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Now I want to tell you, th th these are the words of Jesus, and he spoke it to his disciples, but he's speaking it to us tonight. These are not my words. These are words that I want to heed and we need to heed. Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. But you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, and see that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes, in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall m many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. The Lord Jesus just gave us a description of what's going to take place. And it's taking place today. And if you don't see it, you're not looking. But I want to tell you, it's an encouragement to me to see these things because the Lord told us it was coming. And he warned us that what we needed to do was to endure. In other words, we need some endurance. We need some strength. And he can provide that strength. And he did provide that strength. For those that sat that day listening to him endured to the physical death, but they endured. Billy Graham said one time, a long time ago, and he was highly criticized for it, he said, you know, I believe that 85% of the church membership roles in America, those 85% people are lost. They're not true believers. They're not saved. They don't know the Lord. But what I want to tell you, folks went after him. How dare you? But I want to tell you, maybe that's true. But I want to tell you, the days ahead, because they are going to become more dangerous than they are today, the true disciples are going to stand out. And those others are going to run away because the pressure is going to be great. And we need to be prepared for that. We need to get ready for that. 
And everything that the Lord was saying to us in the Sermon on the Mount and here again to his disciples in Matthew 24 was preparation for that day, for that hour, to get ready. I, I quote a lot of stories from The Insanity of God, the book that I've brought to this church many times. In fact, I have a, a, a DVD. That's, is that what you call that? Brother Scott gave me of that very book, The Insanity of God, but it, the author of that book interviewed a pastor from Vietnam. And after the communists took over, he was close to a body of water that would eventually get him to the ocean, and so he started building a boat because he had to escape. His life was at risk. And one day, seven Vietnamese communist soldiers came to his house. They were armed. They asked him, they said, what are you doing building a boat? Are you trying to escape? And this dear brother, in all honesty, said yes. Do you know what those seven Vietnamese communist soldiers said to that pastor? They said, good, we want to go with you. So you see, deliverance is available. We're called on not to worry about the future. We're called on to trust in the God who has promised to deliver us, and I mean deliver us totally and fully, because everything that we dare to try to hold on to in this world, it's going to be burned up. It's going to be gone. There is nothing that's going to be left here. So why? would we not listen and be ready to be faithful to the end with whatever that may mean for each of us. Because in this world, a true believer, it's going to become more dangerous to claim the name of Christ. There is a song that uh, I love, and I'm not going to sing it, okay? Someday I may try out for the choir. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> this is a song that uh, really speaks to my heart. In my moments of fear, through every pain and every tear, there is a God who's been faithful to me. When my strength was all gone, when my heart had no song, still in love, he's pro pro proved faithful to me. Every word he's promised is true. What I thought was impossible, I've seen my God do. He's been faithful, faithful to me. When my heart looked away, the many times I could not pray, Still my God was faithful to me. The days are spent so selfishly, reaching out for what pleased me. Even then God was faithful to me. Every time I come back to him, he's waiting with open arms. And I see once again 
He's been faithful to me. Whatever or wherever you are in your Christian life, whatever the challenges or problems that you face, you can be sure He is faithful. The future is bright. I want to tell you, it doesn't get worse or it gets better for a Christian. We keep our eyes on him. Lord, help us today to be faithful to you as you are faithful to us. I pray, Lord, that you would help us to endure, to be faithful to the end. And in the days ahead, whatever we must face, may we face with love, with faith, with determination that we will stand true to you and to your word to your calling. And Lord, we pray tonight that you'll bless our pastor, that you'll bless all of our staff and our church. And we thank you for the precious souls that made commitments to you this last Sunday. And I pray that we will see the hand of God at work in our midst. You have so graciously provided for us. And Lord, we are thankful for that. And may we continue to honor you is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen.